guys welcome back I'm doing a little experiment with blow torches today so this is the one I usually use the big boy the butane can I've got another one here if you twist that and get it off I can't get it off it's got a little clip there and this top bit, oh, there we go, <laughs> the top bit comes off. So this is the replaceable can, and you can just buy a new butane can. So that's the one I use there. And this little back bit here fits into that little slot there like that. So like that, and then you just twist it on. So that's the one I generally use, this big boy. If you are going around in circles and you shake that too much, a flame will come out. So you've got to be really careful with that one. A lot of people use this little one. Um, it's a lot more gentle. Um, it's not so scary. It just has a little flame. But um, it has a much smaller surface area, so you get a smaller flame, which means you need to go closer to the surface of your canvas. This one obviously has a bigger surface area. Um, sit in there. It's, it's in there that you've got a... That's your surface area. So this is probably maybe six times as big I would say so you don't get very close to this one with when you're using this one you don't get very close at all to the canvas otherwise you'd burn everything so anyway I'm gonna do a little experiment because I say to people these little ones get really close and make caterpillars so I'm gonna just put my money where my mouth is and see if that is the case so I've mixed up some paints here and I'm gonna divide them into the two cups Pouring medium is 60% glue, sorry, 70% glue, 30% water, and I've got it 50-50. I started at 50-50. The paint, the white paint is always thicker, so I've got 50 grams of pouring medium and 40 grams of paint. The black the same, 50 grams of pouring medium, 40 grams of paint. Uh, these two are, were 50-50. This one, the blue was really thin, so it's got... 40 grams of pouring medium and probably about 55 grams of paint. It was really quite thin, so I had to thicken it up. So don't just go 50-50. You have to work out if your paints are thicker or thinner, and you just have to get that mound on a mound that I look for. For cells, I'm using the treadmill silicone, and I'm going to put three drops in each. One, two, three. I'll do the black, but I won't do the white. One, two, three, one, two, three, get in there, there we go, righty, -o. now mix it up really well, my mix is pretty thick so I have to mix it up really well otherwise I'm going to get big blobs of oil and then when you get a big blob of oil on your surface and you tilt, that blob is going to stretch out and you get this big like blobby worm thing from a big blob of silicone being stretched. So just make sure you've stirred it in really well. Because it's not the, the stirring that makes your cells grow, it's the torching and the tilting that will determine the size of your cells. All right, so that's all done. Let's start layering. I'll do two layers of everything. Put these next to each other for now so that I can layer without making too much mess. So we've got white and then we've got some navy. That's the deep space. And this one is a pale sort of bluey aqua colour. It's called Marina. And I love these two colours together. Oops, that one hasn't got as much paint in it. And then some black, just the contrast between these two light blues. If you put these two together, you're really not going to get very pretty cells. They're too similar. You need to have a dark colour in between those to contrast so that you've got maybe a dark cell with a light ring or a light cell with a dark ring. There's just no point putting two light colours next to each other. So that's kind of a mid-blue, and then we go back to white, which will be fine. Mid-blue next to white is fine. So I don't need all of that paint by the looks of it. I'm only doing a, a little sample here, a little test. So I'm not going to use all this paint. I 
probably going to have way too much on the surface anyway. So I'm just going to flip them over and then torch them. I'm not going to... Oh, well, we'll see what happens. I might end up doing a, a tilt and, and see what happens, but I thought the theory behind this was just to flip it over, torch it, and see what we get. Actually, I might finish off with a little bit of white, seeing I've got a little bit of white left. I like to have white on the bottom and then white on the top as well. My white tends to get lost in a pour. When I use other brands of white, it really stands out, but when I use the global white, it tends to sort of mix and I don't really see a lot of it. Okay, let's move these torches out of the way. So that was the white. Marina. The pale blue was called Clear Day. It's a limited edition colour. And then I've got Deep Space and black. So I'll just move these off to the side. Uh, yeah, that'll do just there. So this one is going to be the little creme brulee torch and this one will be the big boy butane torch. So I wonder what's going to happen. It's exciting, isn't it? I love doing experiments. I can't believe I've never done one of these experiments for you before with torches. We will see. So I'm just going to flip these over. Give it a few seconds. I did spray the cups with my silicone spray just to help all that paint just slide out easily because you don't want to waste it, do you? You don't want half of it to stay in the cup stuck to the side. So the little bit of spray and then wipe it out with paper towel just helps it all come out. Okay, straight over. Straight over, there we go. Oh, these are looking really pretty. What a shame to make an experiment out of them. Go that way a bit and they can be even. Righto, let's get the big boy out first. So you turn him on down here, turn that till you can hear the, the butane and then it's just a click like that. Although, what are you doing? Hey, why aren't you working? All right, just waking up, are you? So with this one, I go up nice and high. I go around in circles. I don't want to get too close. This is what I usually do. You can't. You don't have to um, worry about popping your bubbles. If you get too close, if you say, oh, I want to pop those bubbles, you're going to get too close. So... That's that one there. Um, I think probably for me, I did get a bit close. I have got a little caterpillar there and there. You see, I've got like a colony. I've got, I've got too close. I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's such a small area. <laughs> All right, now, this other one. So it's got a plus and a minus sign here. So just turn that and then like that. So here we go. This is what people tend to do. They go really... Well, you have to get pretty close because it's um, a little, it's only a little surface like that. Oh, there we go. So we've got lots of cells already. Um, and because I've had to go closer, because it's only a little flame and it's a really, it's only comes out this far and it's a really pointy little flame. So straight away I get lots of tiny little cells popping up. Um, and because they're so tiny, I think they kind of, joined together. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Did I count him? 13, 13 definite caterpillars uh, and once you start torching, uh, sorry, tilting, you'll 
may get more because all these little tiny cells will join up together. So you can see the difference. Um, admittedly, I've got a couple of um, caterpillars here. I don't normally. I, I usually torch much higher up. So that was my bad. But if I hadn't have gone so close, you can see where I've gone close because I've got more cells in that area. And then when I've gone higher up, I've got less cells and they're bigger. So um, I think it's just because it was such a small area and I was trying not to torch that way. I sort of was more concentrated. But normally, I don't. So you can see the difference. It's quite clear. This is the big boy, the heat further up. Um, and this is the small guy, the heat further down. So there you go. I'll take you in for a close up and you can see the results a little bit better. I'm just getting my gloves off. That's going to make a pretty paw though. I should tilt it. Although half of it's going to have big cells and more background and the other half is going to have tiny cells and hardly any background. Oops. Okay. So I think that's about as close as I can get to. Hopefully you can see the difference in the cells. So the one on the right's obviously got more background. The cells are bigger because they've got more, more room. The little ones, they're kind of um, popped up and they're bumping into each other. So with the one on the left, if you had to stretch those, because there's so many cells in there and they're all touching each other already, you're going to get quite wobbly, bumpy cells. Whereas the ones on the right, um, they're going to have more room to, to spread. So they won't be so sort of wobbly and bumping into each other, if you know what I mean. So, is that going to focus? That's the big boy butane torch results. And as I said, it's my fault. I did get a bit close in the middle there. I got that little colony pop up. If I'd stayed up higher, it would have been a better result and I wouldn't have had any caterpillars. And then over here, where I've used the little guy, lots and lots of caterpillars. Well, they're kind of more like centipedes, aren't they? Because their little cells are actually separated. But when they stretch out, they're really not attractive. They just end up like these big blurry worms. So there you go. Caterpillars. Love them or hate them. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope you've learned something. Have a go at the big boy blowtorch if you haven't already. And uh, I'll see you for the next pour. Bye for now.